Hey guys, it's Kay. Now recently I purchased the Nvidia Shield TV, the Pro version. Now it's a great box and I've been enjoying all the benefits it brings, including the 4K HDR playback from Netflix and YouTube. Also the advantage of being able to play games from the Google Play Store. And of course the great thing about the Shield TV Pro is that you have expandable storage with the two USB 3 slots and fast access to internet for streaming with the Ethernet port. Now today I want to talk about Plex and using it on your Nvidia Shield TV. So what is Plex? Well Plex is the most popular media server available. Now with Plex on your Shield TV Pro, you can host and access your own media, including movies, music, photos, and these can be viewed anywhere an internet connection is available. And the great thing is, the Shield TV Pro comes with both Plex Client and Plex Media Server pre-installed. Now the Plex Client allows you to access content from any existing Plex Media Server, which can be running on a PC, a standalone NAS, with Plex Media enabled, or on your Nvidia Shield TV. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks, so subscribe and hit the notification button. Now to get the best out of my Nvidia Shield Plex server, I'm adding a shed load of storage in the form of an SSD. And I'm going to use this, the Sabrent 2.5 SATA hard drive SSD to USB 3 adapter. Believe me, that's a bit of a mouthful, but who cares as long as it works. So as you can see, the important thing is it's plug and play and it's hot swappable. Now, for the SSD, I'm going to be using this Kingston 240GB drive. This should give my Nvidia Shield a boost in speed and space. So, up close you can see the Sabrent cable is going to fit perfectly to the SSD and the USB 3 port of the Nvidia Shield. All that remains to be done is connecting the Sabrent cable to the SSD. And like it says on the box, it's just plug and play. Perfect fit. Now we just need to connect the other end to the USB 3 port of the Nvidia Shield, but there's a few things we need to do first before we do this. Now the main thing you need to do is connect your hard drive to your PC or Mac and using a disk utility, format it to XFAT. Now if you miss this step out, you're going to get the following error message when you connect your SSD to your Nvidia Shield. So once you've done that, you can safely connect your SSD to your Nvidia Shield. Now back on the Nvidia Shield, once you power up, you'll see a notification, and it should say USB Drive, tap to set up. Now if you do that, you'll get the option to browse, set up device storage, or eject. I'm going to scroll down and select setup as device storage. At this point, you're going to need to format the drive. Now give it a few minutes to do its thing. Now I'll speed this up for your convenience. So when it's complete, you're going to get two options to move your data now or move it later. Now this will move the majority of your data from your Nvidia Shields drive to the SSD drive. Now I know I haven't got much data to move across, so I'm going to do it now. Again, give it a few minutes. Now it says data has been migrated to the USB drive, but to check, we're going to go into our settings and scroll down to device preferences, and then scroll down to storage. And there you can see we have our SSD with 236 gigabytes. And if we select it, we can see how the space is distributed on the drive. Now with Plex's free account, you can get all the basic media organization and streaming capabilities. And it gives you the ability to cast to other devices, also giving you loads of support for tons of media formats, including 4K. Now the free account also lets you share your server with others, use Plex's VR app, and control playback with voice controls on supported hardware. So for the more advanced users, you can also get a premium Plex Pass account for a monthly subscription, which includes everything in the free account plus a host of other usability features. Now for this video, I'm going to concentrate on the free account, which offers some great value. So the free account streams a selection of movies and TV shows for all users. All you need to do is sign in and create an account with an email. Now they recently gained Crackle's entire library which significantly boosts the size and quality of the Plex catalogue. The movies and shows are organised with titles in horizontal scrolling categories. So you get recently added, most popular, top movies on Crackle, Plex Picks, only on Plex for a limited time, and several other genre related ones. I can easily recommend Plex's on demand library to anyone looking for a free video streaming service. Now Plex also offers a selection of live TV channels, there's easily over a hundred available. And some of the available channels include Docurama, Fubo, Sports Network, Retro Crush, Reuters, Reverie, Tastemade, The Film Detective, The Pet Collective, the list goes on. Now with the free account you can access all this live content. Now another great feature is that Plex also includes web shows. Now the web shows section highlights episodes and series of videos across a range of categories, including arts and entertainment, autos and vehicles, computers and electronics, health, science, sport and travel. If you find a show you like, you can add it to your My Show list. Plex also includes a podcast section. To get started, click on the podcast menu section on the left hand menu. So you can now browse through recommended or featured categories of podcasts such as popular, news and politics or society and culture. You can also click on the categories button to see the whole list of categories. Now there is a music section available by title. 
but that is a subscription based service. Now to use Plex as a media server so you can stream your own content to your tablets, phones and computers, just click on the settings menu down the bottom and scroll down to Plex Media Server and click on it. Now make sure the enabled Plex Media Server is ticked and then click on next and you'll get the following message basically telling you you need to create an account to use Plex Media Server. So clicking on OK you'll get the following message. Now as it says in the message I'm going to go on my computer and type in the following address and enter the following code. Now on my browser on my computer I've gone to the Plex TV link website and I've been asked to create an account so I'm going to put in my details and here I'm going to use my Google Gmail account. Click on create account and next you'll be prompted to input that code you got off your NVIDIA Shield and here's mine as a reminder. So it's TCVF and click on link and that's it guys your account is now linked. So if you head on back to our NVIDIA Shield TV you'll see the following screen. Make sure create default libraries for Plex Media Server is ticked then click on next and then click on allow media storage permission and then click on next again and then just wait for it to start up for the first time. Then eventually you'll get the following message telling you that the Plex Media Server is set up and complete. So if you go back to the home screen you'll see that I'm logged into my account now. Now if we scroll down you'll see that we've got a new section. Now this section is your own personal media section and you need to fill it with your own media so it's all empty at the moment. Now it does tell us that we need to use the Plex web app to add media. Now it's important to clarify that the web app will scan for media that's already there. But before we can do that we need to get the media on our Plex server which is on our NVIDIA Shield. Now of course you've still got access to Plex's online content, web shows, news, podcasts, movies and shows and live TV. Now just pop into settings and make sure that the Plex media server is up and running. And here we can see it is. Now the next thing we need to do is populate those empty media fields with our media. So the first thing we need to do is pop back into our settings on our NVIDIA Shield and head down to device preferences and then head down to storage and here go down to transfer files over local network and make sure this is turned on. Now this will give you your Plex server information. So it's your username, your password and your IP address and we're going to use this information on our PC to connect to our Plex server. So back on our computer I'm going to open up a file explorer and open up a network connection. In the address field I'm going to enter my NVIDIA Shield server address and then click on connect. That will bring up another box and I'm going to enter my username and password and I'm going to tick the box to remember password and click connect. Now what you're seeing here is our file system on the NVIDIA Shield and we can see the folder called Plex Media Server and under that I have created a folder called Movies and I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to leave that there and open up another file explorer to copy across some videos and pictures. Copying the files across to your Plex server on your NVIDIA Shield shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes it all depends on your network speed. Ok guys that is done now. The next thing we need to do is make sure that this media is viewable on our Plex server on our NVIDIA Shield. And to do that we need to open up a web browser on our computer and if you just search for Plex TV app it should come up. Here we just need to click on sign in and like before I'm going to use my Google account to sign in. Now you can actually see I am logged in. You can see my logo over here on my account. So now I'm going to click on launch. Now this will launch the Plex app on my PC and it will be connected to my Plex server on my NVIDIA Shield via my network. So straight away we can see the home page, we can see Plex Media. Now to access the media I've just transferred onto the Plex server I need to click on more and that will bring up another side menu on the top and it's titled Shield TV. Denoting this is actually the media on the Plex server on the NVIDIA Shield TV. So currently all the submenus are empty but we're going to fix this so just click on manage library and I want to put my videos in the home video section so I'm going to update that. Clicking on edit brings up the following box. Now you can rename this folder to anything you want from here but from here I want to add the folder I put my media in. So I click on add folders and then I click on the browse and from here I just navigate to the Plex media server folder and then I just select the folder I created within that which is called movies and then just simply click on the add button and then we can save these changes. So if we click back to go to the home screen and if we scroll down to home videos you can now see my media. So let's take a quick look and it comes up pretty nicely. Now I did forget to record the sound on my PC but there is sound on the video. Now if you want to add pictures or anything else you just go to the respective folder and repeat the process. So here I'm going to add photos so click on photos, click on the add folder, navigate to where you got the photos and then add the folder and then save. And then just click on back to go to the home screen and you should see them on your home screen. And you just click on the file you want to view and it comes up. Now to view files on your mobile or tablet it's a similar process. So on my phone I'm going to open up the app 
and all you have to do is sign in with the same account you have on your Plex server, which in my case is the Google account, and instantly you can see my files there, and I just simply click on it to play it. And it is just as simple as that guys, setting up Plex on your Nvidia Shield TV. So guys, if you found this video helpful, give us a like, and maybe even a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.